Hello, I'm Gino Martini and I'm the Chief Scientist for the Royal Pharmaceutical Society. And today we're going to talk about pain and its management. There are three kinds of pain. There's acute pain, chronic pain and chronic primary pain. And each one involves a different treatment regimen. Acute pain comes on relatively quickly and goes relatively quickly. This is often associated with some form of injury or inflammation, and usually a short course of over-the-counter analgesics is often recommended. In 2015, the Cochrane Review looked into this area and found that ibuprofen or paracetamol combination were very effective in 70% of the patients. Also, fast-acting formulations of ibuprofen or ibuprofen with caffeine was also found to be effective in about 50% of patients. Chronic pain uh, is when pain lasts longer than three months or recurs over a three month period. Now chronic pain is a long term condition and affects about one third of the population. Because it's long term, patients need to be treated individually because no one size fits all. What we're going to be careful of though, however, with chronic pain is that we're using analgesics with an opioid like codeine, there's potential for addiction issues and therefore a conversation between the healthcare practitioner and the patient is warranted. Then it causes chronic primary pain and this is a relatively new concept and not yet really evidenced and this is where pain again is long term but it recurs or lasts longer than three months but there's no discernible cause. So what we find in this case is that non-pharmacological treatments are recommended. What's often prescribed is a form of exercise, psychological counselling or in some cases complementary therapy like acupuncture. In 2018, the Pharmaceutical Journal and the Royal Pharmaceutical Society conducted a round table. And in that round table, they were discussing how to treat pain in patients and the role of the pharmacist. It became very clear that pharmacists could and should do more when it comes to pain management with patients. Also, it became very clear that confusion or misconceptions existed. And in particular, there was a common misconception that paracetamol is much safer than ibuprofen. And again, we saw that more recently during the COVID-19 pandemic, where there was a suggestion that ibuprofen could not be used for patients suffering from COVID-19. And in fact, there was a suggestion that ibuprofen could make you more susceptible to acquiring the virus, which leads to COVID-19. Our medicines regulator, the MHRA, in conjunction with its expert advisor group, the Commission for Human Medicines, reviewed all the data, and they came to the conclusion that actually ibuprofen could be used for patients with COVID-19, and there was no evidence to suggest that ibuprofen could lead to patients acquiring the virus that leads to COVID-19, i.e. make them more susceptible. So basically the conclusion became very clear. You can use ibuprofen or paracetamol to treat patients suffering from COVID-19. Overall, any misconceptions about over-the-counter analgesics stems from a lack of knowledge or recent information on that topic. So the advice to my colleagues is to read the Cochrane Review 2015, read the latest guidances from NICE and the guidances of esteemed bodies such as the British Pain Society and the Faculty in Pain Medicine of the Royal College of Anaesthetists. Thank you.